You know the vibes. Welcome to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast brought to you by NBA 2K23. I am myself, my Mooksy, the one and only, joined by, back again, Mr. BJ Armstrong. BJ, how you doing today? Oh, boy, it's, it's a beautiful day, you know? It's a beautiful day, a beautiful evening. We were treated to a couple of outstanding games. I know. In the playoffs. You know, Mo, you know what I love about the playoffs, Mo? Mm. You find out everything mm -hmm. that you need to know about a team, about a player. And tonight was, whew. I'm exhausted. Jimmy. I ain't even watch. Jimmy. I, I, I ain't even play. I just watched and I'm exhausted. Listen, I know yeah. it's a beautiful day because the sunshine is coming through my windows. Once again, we're past 6 a.m. Haven't slept. Watch playoffs all oh, night. Oh, but I'm doing this whoa. podcast for the people. BJ said to me, are you sure you want to tape? I said, BJ, how can I sleep when the world is sleeping on me? <laughs> So here we are. That's a bar, bro. That's hey, a bar, bro. That's a bar. Hey, they don't want to hear me get busy with it. So, two games, two maybe all-time classics, two of the best games we've seen this season. Let's start over in the East. Miami yes, went to please. this game with a 2-1 lead. Giannis returned from injury. Yes. And what a game it was. Bam going to foul trouble early. Giannis was dominating early on. The Bucks defense was greatly improved with Giannis being back there. You know, Giannis was drawing in a defense, dishing to his teammates. But the Miami Heat stayed in the game in the first quarter. Jimmy Butler had 22 points in the first quarter alone. Second quarter begins. You know, uh, Drew Holiday went on to Jimmy Butler, locked him down, limited him to only two points in the second. Duncan Robinson was hitting a few threes, and the game was about even kill. The third quarter, Milwaukee dominated on the glass and locked down the interior on the defense. So they really made a big run in the third and took a big lead, double digits. He closed the third quarter on a 6 0 run. Um, Brooke Lopez absolutely dominated Bam Adebayo throughout this game. But then the fourth quarter, wow, oh, wow. Uh, the Miami Heat defense locked in. Kyle Lowry made huge contributions. Um, and then Jimmy Butler turned into playoff Jimmy. Oh, mm. my word. He finished mm. the game with 56 points. I think he had like 23 points in the fourth quarter. He, well, I don't even have the words. When we talk about someone willing their team to win, I looked at it like, how am I going to break this down? He just wants to win more than anyone else. And every time he has a possession, he will simply find a way to put the ball in the bucket. He's not the best three-point shooter. He's not the highest leaper. He's not got the quickest first step. He just finds a way to get it done. Now, the Miami Heat, they were hunting down Chris Middleton on the defensive side to go up against him, and Butler was cooking against him. And, um, you know, um, the kid, Caleb Martin, did a great job with a couple of timely shots. But Jimmy Butler... What can we even say about this guy? This is the eighth seed who now has a 3-1 lead against the one seed Milwaukee Bucks. What, what can we even say about Jimmy Butler? But he's just, it's just special. You know, the ability to kind of chill throughout the regular season and then get to the playoffs and do this. <laughs> well, I don't know if we should be highlighting that. I don't know if we should be saying that. I just got to keep it 100 because he came out and said it publicly that he's not really worried about the regular season. This is insane to me. This is What he did tonight is absolutely insane that he has just simply willed his team to victory. The team scored 119 points. Jimmy Butler scored 56 of them. It's insane. Yeah, it's... Um, you know, that, that was a incredible, incredible game. I mean, it was a performance. I mean, it, it, was, it has to rank up there somewhere with one of the all-time great playoff moments in Miami Heat history. And they certainly had their fair share of terrific moments and terrific individual players and championships it, it and so the, forth. It was the so best on. one since we saw the game six LeBron in Boston. That was, well, I mean, it was, it was, it was those, those are top two. I mean, you know, I, I mean, as you were talking, I, I just had to look up the stats. I mean, this guy has like 56 points, right? I mean, 19 to 28 from the field. Uh, you know, he's 15 to 18 from the line. He's got nine rebounds. I mean, wow, what a performance. I, I, I mean, what can you say? I mean, when you say someone carried the book bag, he literally 
I mean, what did they score? 119 points. I mean, he's he's got 54, 56 of them. He carried everything. He was just a, he, he was he carried yeah, he Bam out of Bio's reputation. He carried a whole bunch of these guys to contracts in the offseason. He carried <laughs> Pat Riley from all the slander for not putting together a better team around him. And he may have carried Mike Budenholzer out of the door because BJ, I was so annoyed from a Bucks perspective watching this. How the hell do you go on a zero and thirteen run, right? And you don't call a timeout. The Bucks had a 13 point lead, 12 point lead. And Mike Budenholzer did not call a timeout until the Miami Heat took the lead. I just don't know how that happens in the fourth well, quarter well, of such a pivotal game in the series. Well, Mo, I, I, I will say this. When you have a championship caliber team. Many times, Mo, you allow your team because this is a championship caliber team. Okay, this isn't one. They they have players of that that have won the final game of the season. Okay, this isn't like they're trying to. You know, this is a team that's battle tested. They have the confidence to play and play through their mistakes. So, you know, I've seen this many a times when you have a championship caliber team. When you have a veteran team, right? You have. Giannis, Middleton, Lopez, you know, and Holiday in particular, when you have those guys on the floor, you know, you let those guys play through it, especially late in the ball game. So that to me is just him having trust with his team. And that's a feel that you have to have as a coach. Sometimes you allow your team to play through it because you have a feel. Those guys know what to do. However, in this case, you, oh, we can point to, why didn't he call a timeout? Why didn't he? Da, 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 okay. But he's done that for years because he trusts his guys. And for better or for worse, it didn't work to, that night. But let me tell you something. You know, they had some costly turnovers. Yep. Uncharacteristic turnovers that they had as a group. Giannis, even though he, you know, had a triple double, he didn't look like himself to me. And why should he? He's missed, what, three games or so? Uh, in the playoffs, I don't know if his back something. It didn't. He didn't look like his normal, active self to me. Even though he had a great game, but you know that they, now they're in a fight. Now, okay, they got to win three in a row. We know the task. I want to see Jimmy Butler finish the game. Now that to me is the key. Mm-hmm. And what I, what, you know, it. This reminds me. This game here, I was when I was watching this game, and remember when Tracy McGrady went up like three one versus the Pistons that one year? Well, you're mm-hmm. you're young, you're you're and you're, you're so young. I watched you're the tape. Enough, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you watched the tape. You watched the YouTube. <laughs> Tracy McGrady went up against the Detroit Pistons, and this reminds me of that game because I said, you know what, this is a amazing performance. However, it's not an a great, it's not an amazing performance until you finish it. Mm-hmm. He's got to finish this because and, I, I and right now Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler has some work to do, and the hardest game is the is the one that you got to close it out. I so, thought about we'll, we'll see. 2006, the Suns were down three one to the Lakers, who were the lower seed than them, and then Nash went off for the next uh, three games, destroyed the Lakers, and carried them to a win. Uh, so now it's Giannis's turn to show that he is the best player in the world. Chris Middleton, though. Had an absolutely horrible night. Um, exposed defensively, the Miami Heat were hunting him down. Four from 12 on the field on the offensive side of the ball. As a second star, you've really got to step up. I mean, Brooke Lopez, no, sensation. they weren't hunting season. him down. They weren't hunting him down. Jimmy Butler. <laughs> yeah, J- Jimmy <laughs> Butler. Jimmy yeah, let's Butler not say they. Said, it's, not like, it's not like they. This wasn't a day tonight, Mo. <laughs> Jimmy Butler said, Chris Middleton, you are barbecue chicken. Um, and even on possessions, there was somewhere like Drew tried to go under the screen to avoid the switch, and Jimmy Butler just cashed in jump shots. Absolutely horrendous performance from the supporting cast of Milwaukee. Um, Chris Middleton, that was a disgraceful performance. Miami uh, Milwaukee fans loved using the excuse last year that Middleton was injured, but he wasn't injured tonight. He was there, and well, he was there, but he wasn't. He wasn't there. You know what I mean? He wasn't there. Um, Now, with the 3-1 lead, do you see the Milwaukee Bucks coming back or winning three in a row, or do you think the Miami Heat have got what it takes to close this out? Well, this is a championship team. Okay, let's make no doubt about it. This is a high-character team. It's a high-character team. And 
And one game can change the series. One moment. One play. And if there's anything that we've learned in the first round of the playoffs, is let's just watch the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. Down two zip. You know, nice two zip. Down, no, 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 you, 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 when you have a championship caliber team, that means you have two things. Clearly, you have a team that's that's skilled at skill positions, and you have you have high character. Now, these guys aren't going to go away. I mean, they're not just going to. These guys were up thirteen on the road, and let me tell you something, Mo. They were up thirteen, and when you get up thirteen, I can I can assure you this: there were some things. There were some things that you can, you know, that you can say, you know what? They they got some things that they can go to and say, hey, we know we can get something accomplished. So I expect them to go back home. They'll be better at home. Their bench, Bobby Porters and these guys. I don't know. Did you catch why, what's going on with Jay Crowder? Why 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 didn't he play tonight? Uh, DMP coached his decision. I don't yeah, know. If he yeah, was... yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what was going like. Like, I don't know what's going on. Again, you know, I'm just watching. Mo, he played basically eight guys tonight. Mm-hmm. And he didn't go. I mean, no one scored in double figures. I mean, he went with Joe Ingles, Bobby Porters, and Pat Connington. Like, I don't know. I I, I think Joe Jay Crowder could have done something in that game. You could that try did, did. and try and slow Jimmy down a little bit. I mean, if Middleton's hey, getting hey, cooked, hey, put hey, him hey, on the hey, bench. Hey, it's hey, not hey. like Middleton's uh, giving you any scoring on the other end. Put him like, on the bench. Like, if there's anything to say from my from my viewpoint, my vantage point, I should say, is Jimmy Butler is a bad matchup for their wing players. Okay, Grayson Allen and Chris Middleton. Jimmy is too athletic for Chris Middleton, and he's too big for Grayson Allen. He's too big and too strong for Drew Holiday. Okay, mm-hmm. that's just a bad match. Like, like Drew did a great job of him in the second quarter, but he couldn't maintain that over the whole game. No, no, he, he's too big. Jimmy, Jimmy's a big man. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's too athletic. Okay, for Joe Ingles, and he's too strong and a better athlete than Pat Connaughton. And the honest is coming it, it, off it, it, a back injury, which he looked like yeah, he's still carrying an injury. I saw yes, like no, I don't know if it came up on the broadcast, but I saw a bit where Giannis was clearly like limping or whatever, and he looked injured, and he's signaling to the bench, "Don't sub me out." So take that for what it is. Yeah, I, I mean, Jimmy is just a bad matchup for the wing defenders on the on the uh, on the on the on the Milwaukee Bucks. However, Jay Crowder is. Sh- Strong enough to play through the initial contact. Mm. That's just my that's just my opinion. He hasn't been playing um, well though. I don't know the this series so far. So. Yeah, that's fine. He hasn't been playing well. But let me tell you something. What he does bring, he brings toughness to the group. Mm. I don't expect him to play well. I don't expect. Pe- <laughs> Here's the one thing, Mo. That just because you make shots doesn't mean that you play well. Jay Crowder can affect the game and doesn't have to make shots. You don't get Jay Crowder to make shots. You get Jay Crowder because he's going to do all the dirty work. Someone's got to defend. Someone has to defend the other team's best players. Jay Crowder is going to bring two things. He's going to bring toughness. And he's going to do all of the necessary things to win a basketball game. Now, if you're telling me you want Jay Crowder to shoot like Grayson Allen, maybe he won't do that. Some nights he might. But you got to first in the playoffs mode defend. You got to get some stops. You well, I mean, I mean, he he couldn't get points. stops on Jimmy in the game one. So, Mo, Mo these are great players. No one stops. It. There you go. Just in case, Mo, we're, maybe maybe I'm just not watching the game. So I'm so excuse me. The offense in today's game, the offensive player has a significant advantage. Yeah. No. I'm not. However, you must provide two things. You got to give some type of resistance. Some type. Like, I'm not going to stop Jimmy Butler. Why? Because he has an advantage as an offensive player in today's game. I can't impede his progress. I can't touch him. I can't do anything. If I accidentally hit you in the top of the head, in the head, it's a flagrant two. The offensive player can literally push me out of the way. The offensive player has an advantage. That's a fact. However, okay, but, but the point I'm making, and I agree with what you're saying, is the point I'm making is having sat out for pretty much the entire season, 
the Jay Crowder that played in games, the previous games of this series, I think perhaps you're judging Jay Crowder on what he's done previously in his career rather than what he's done actually with the Milwaukee Bucks because he looks he's looked completely out of sorts when he's been playing for them this year. We are all entitled to our opinions. I don't, I don't have a problem with that opinion. I don't have a problem with that. You know, I play with players on our team that would look completely out of sorts during the re- course of regular season. I mean, I agree he should be playing. playing. I agree he should be playing. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I that's fine. That, that, that's great. I, I don't have a problem with that. Sometimes you find a rhythm. Sometimes you don't. However, when you get to the playoffs, it's about one thing. It's about matchups. And we can sit here and debate all we want to. Chris Middleton and Grayson Allen is a bad matchup for Jimmy Butler. Of course. That's it. Okay. Now, if we're gonna tell if we're if we're gonna allow a man to score 56 points, we got a major problem. Now, I know Jay Carter would have done. See, here's my problem with the scoring under 56 points. If you're going to have 56 points, and this is the guy, and Chris Middleton did that. He he fouled out, right? He fouled out tonight. He uh, yeah. Out. Yeah. Okay. If we're going to have 56 points, you can't tell me that I can't provide a defensive coverage. For instance, for instance, there was this little, there was a player that I played with once, and they made a whole rule. They they put, they they put They incorporated a defensive rule every time he caught the ball. Just for instance, I'm just this is just a casual statement. I'm going to say they incorporated a rule. You mean to tell me, Mo, that we're up 13 and it wasn't like, Mo, I was watching the game or you were watching the game or anybody else was watching the game. We didn't know, like, what player they're going to run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was just running turnovers who, and bad who, shot selection. Who, who Who's going to get the shot when Coach Mo calls a timeout? What, what play you think? Who do you think he's going to go to? Well, he would have to call us out first is- for that to actually happen. <laughs> okay. We exactly. Get- so in the end, in the end, right? If there's one criticism that you could say about the Milwaukee Bucks here is the Milwaukee Bucks had this game had this game under control. They forgot one thing. They forgot to finish it. 48 minutes is a long time. Give the Miami Heat credit. But I think I think as they if they are to advance, they're going to need the size and toughness and figure out what Jay Crowder can do because Jay Crowder missed the entire season, literally, until the playoffs. And they're going to have to figure out, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, to incorporate his toughness because they can't match up with some of these players. Should I tell you the true failing of this Milwaukee team? Okay, go ahead. All of this would have been avoided if you had just re-signed PJ Tucker after you won a championship with him. Well, I don't think you could. I don't, financially, it doesn't. It didn't fit in the books. I mean, we saw last season how he would have made an impact. We're seeing this season again how he would have made an impact. Meanwhile, PJ Tucker is already in the next round with the Sixers. So that's that's, yeah, that's just that, me, that's, though. That's just me. Yeah, though. That, I mean. That's... Yeah, that's you, you that's fine. Get but I, I, can't... I mean, the Warriors pay, the Clippers pay, they don't even win. So for me, I'm like, yeah, you guys I, I, just I, kept I agree. I agree with, I agree with, I agree with the actually the Milwaukee Bucks on that. Do, do everybody's got to hit on your timeline. When I look at the Bucks, there's one missing piece from their team they don't have any wing athletes. Yeah, because Ingalls isn't an athlete, Middleton's coming off injury. You know, well, you got Pat Connaughton is a good athlete, but he's not going to be. They, you know, he's he's Pat Connaughton, respectfully. Uh, okay, when you anytime they face wing athletes, they struggle. Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they, they, they it's just is what it is. So, mm-hmm. I agree that yes, the toughness of PJ Tucker, absolutely, you got you love him. I mean, you, he is a delight. However, I'm not buying. With that team as is currently constructed, that you can afford to do that. Do you think right? that it's do you think it's a well constructed roster or Giannis has just been covering up with his greatness, you know, the failings of the team around him? 
I think what, what, uh, like I think Lopez is a great fit. I think Drew Holiday is a great fit. Do I think Chris Middleton is still the player he was when he won a championship? No, I don't. Do I think that the guys coming off the bench are the, the best possible role players that I could have? No, I don't. I think having Giannis just covers up for a lot, you know. As you like to tell me, winning covers a multitude of sins and they're the one seed. Yes, that, that I think some of that could be true. Could, could be. But I also said this. When the playoffs begin, Mo, the record is 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> when the playoffs begin, Mo, when the playoffs begin, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. When the playoffs begin, Mo, it's a different brand of basketball. Now, when I have time to prepare for you, Mo, and – I prepare to play seven games against you. That means, Mo, every weakness that you have on your team that I can't see on a nightly basis in the regular season, I'm going to see now. When I see this team, there's a glaring weakness with their per with their perimeter players to defend athletic wings. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mo, we're having this conversation not because they've outplayed them three out of the last four games. Literally, Giannis has missed three out of the last four games. Mm. Okay, let, let's yeah. got to put it in its proper context. Yeah, of course. It's not like they beat a team that with Giannis on the floor at full strength. Giannis, he played 10, 11 minutes in game one, and he hasn't played until tonight, and he plays about 40 minutes and he hasn't played in three days. And we we know something is wrong with Giannis because Giannis doesn't miss games. Yeah. Okay, this guy is, okay. So now we're seeing one of their glaring weaknesses because of what you just said. Giannis is that good. At some point, I would imagine if Giannis was, let's just say he was healthy. I got to imagine that he probably would have slid over there. We're talking about a defensive player of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he is the one player that we know will guard the other team's best player. He guards LeBron. He guards Jason Tatum. He guards Steph KD. Curry. He, get K, he guards KD. And I don't believe that he wouldn't have slid over there and guarded Jimmy Butler. So that just let me know something's wrong with him. However, if your best player can't do that, who's the other guy? Because as an offensive player and as a defensive player, you got to look at, what can I take away from that offensive player when they got it going like that? Jimmy Butler's hitting step back threes right now. Jimmy Butler was running to the three point line. He's not even a three point shooter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now he was shooting over the top, but maybe I was seeing something different on my television. He was shooting over the top of the other guys. So you got to do something. I don't care if it's double team. I don't care if it's putting a bigger player on him. But what we do know is that he's too athletic and too strong for the guys he currently have on him. At least, at least Jay Crowder can take something away. Mm -hmm. and he can take away. Now, and, and, and so you got to do something different. Now, I would hope, and I told you this watching the Celtics, you got to play more than eight guys if you're going to make a deep run. I mean, he went very short with his bench on the road, which lets me know that this was a must game for them. If mm -hmm. they win this game, we say nothing. We say Giannis was great. He looks terrific. He's back. They go home. Series is tied 2-2, 3-2, 4-2. Move on to the next round. Now I'm over there in a the dogfight. Okay? Because the next time they lose, it's over. Mm -hmm. So I, I, right I, now, we're going to see what, what, what they're going to do. I would love it. Jimmy Butler, take out the number one seed for me. Yeah. Take them out. I, th I think how this plays out, and I don't know anything, but I think how this plays out is this. I think game five, I don't see Jimmy going into Milwaukee and scoring 50. I don't I don't see that. They're going to play like, better. Like Jason Tatum in game six last year, 46. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't see that happening. But it could, but I don't see it. Even if it could, I mean, you got you got to get, I don't, I don't know who the second scorer is. For the for the Miami Heat, yeah, I mean, I don't I was, know who I'm the surprised they didn't is. throw more traps at Jimmy. You know, forced the ball out of his hands. Yeah, I don't know who teams. the second score. I, I don't know, but what I do know is I like the fact 
when you utilize players that maybe didn't play well during the regular season. Like Duncan Robertson, for instance. Amazing. Like, see, that to me is what makes the game fun. Okay, guy hasn't been in the rotation. Guy hasn't been playing. Da da da. Tyler Hero goes down. You know, they 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 lose Victor Oladipo. You know, shout out to him. Hope he, you know, gets well soon. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, this kid Duncan Robertson provides spacing on the floor. And not only does he provide spacing on the floor, it changes their defensive matchups. See, Mo, the, the, these are Jimmy. So it's clear to me what the Miami Heat are doing. Maybe the Milwaukee Bucks just didn't think it would work for 48 minutes. Mm-hmm. What the, the Miami Heat are doing is the following. We do not want to play five on five, five versus five against the Milwaukee Bucks because they're bigger than us. Their front line completely dominated their front line. Okay, when you look at the numbers, let's just look at the numbers real quick of their front line mode. They completely dominated them, all right? The Milwaukee Bucks bigs. Brooke Lopez had 36 and 11 in three blocks. Giannis has 26, 10, and 13 assists and two blocks. Now, Mo, you get those type of contributions from your interior players and you lose. If you told me that before the game, I would have said, oh, that's a blowout. Mm-hmm. You get 36 from Brooke. Oh, from Brooke Lopez. That should be a 20-point win. That's what I'm saying, Mo. So now what I'm saying is they have to address what we're talking about here. Defensively, Kevin Love has six points, Bam has 15 points, and you lose. What? <laughs> if I if I told you that those were the numbers before the game, you'd be like, how? Mm-hmm. Matt Struess has zero points. Yep. Okay. I think they are going to have to have a new defensive scheme clearly to contain. You're not going to stop him, but you got to contain him. Because if you contain him and you continue to do what you did against the other player, now, Mo, that's a 20-point win. Yeah, listen, if, if I'm the Bucks, if Max Struess has 30 points or Kevin Love has 30 points or Caleb Martin has 20 points, I can live with that. But I can't live with Jimmy Butler scoring 50% of his team's points. Now, now, that's now, insane. Now, now you're talking. Now, Mo, now you're talking to me. So now to me, either the coaching staff was like, they don't re- they didn't respect and think he could do that, which, you know, we haven't seen him have these type of explosions in a while. And I didn't think that they could actually beat them with just one guy. I really didn't. Mm-hmm. And I, I kept watching because I was like, oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. Because the the Milwaukee, I mean the yeah the Milwaukee Bucks, they played terrific. I mean they completely dominated the they they dominated the game in the inside. Mm-hmm. Their interior players were, I mean they, it was like, you know you you're watching the big guys play against the little guys, but Jimmy Butler was making shots that were just, and they were timely shots. So we'll see, and 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 I still think that the Milwaukee Bucks will regroup. I still like their chances. And if Giannis can stay healthy and play, I think it's going to be difficult for them to close it out unless they get some type of contribution from someone that we don't know or not aware of at this, at this time. Well, we're going to have to wait and see. It's going to be a very tense game five in Milwaukee. And um, we're going to be there for that. But listen, the action just got better and better. As the Memphis Grizzlies and Lakers gave us a classic in LA game four, the Lakers now lead three games to one, 117 to 111 in an overtime win for LeBron James, who had 22 points and 20 rebounds, playing 45 minutes at the age of 38. Simply sensational. Austin Reeves had a team high 23. D'Angelo Russell gave him 17. Anthony Davis only had 12. Very quiet night from him in terms of scoring. Made some huge blocks defensively, though. The Memphis Grizzlies, led by um, Desmond Bain with 36. John Morant had 19. Um, it was an interesting game, BJ, because after the first half, you thought the Lakers were just going to run away with it. Then in the third quarter, they just got really too much, too comfortable. Um, the adjustment from the Grizzlies, instead of letting Dylan Brooks guard LeBron, they actually put Xavier Tillman on LeBron. And LeBron was actually quite passive in the second half. In fact, he didn't score since the end of the third quarter. He didn't score again until he made the basket that sent the game to overtime. 
And then obviously in overtime, he did his thing. They got the win. Um, but very nervy for the Lakers down the stretch there. The Grizzlies really should, could have and should have won this game. So what did you take away from that one other than LeBron James is still that guy? Well, yeah, you know, when you look at the game, you know, the most dynamic player on the floor is, is, is you know, John Morant. I mean, John Morant is... <laughs> Ja- I mean, was fantastic, he, he, but there were a couple times where he was trying to jump over LeBron or something, and LeBron took two charges with just wildly crazy, I'm just going to throw my body up at the rim and see what happens, um, plays from John Morant, which was quite concerning. Um, yeah, he, he he he's without question, he's the best, the best player, the best athlete on the floor. I mean, he's playing through an injury. And he, you know, and I give him credit. He's he's just playing. His energy alone allows him. You know, I, I was I was watching I was watching the game, talking on the phone to my son, and he, and I just told him, you know what, that is that is a little wild because it is it's reckless to watch him try to jump over people like that. But there's something about it I really like it. <laughs> like, yeah, no, the no. guy, the guy, the guy just coming. I. I I mean, I like it, but I worry. I'm like, well, you've already hurt your wrist once. Imagine you come down and it's even worse. I mean, it's quite crazy. Also, the fact that that's two possessions that went to the Lakers. And had you scored on those two possessions or got to the free throw line or passed to a teammate, you could have actually won the game in regulation. Because in the playoffs, it's all about the margins. Like, I I get it. Cool. In the regular season, try to jump over everyone. This is the playoffs. Every single possession, especially in the close game, should be valued. Yeah, I, I... I have no problem with that. I, I like it when you bring it. You force the referees to make a play. I like those type of players, right? Because those players can go either way. And I give LeBron for standing in there and taking it. Yeah, However, sure, I give him credit. I give him I give him credit for saying, you know what? L- let's see if you want to stand in there and take that charge. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get the call, sometimes you don't. However, one of the principles of a sound offense is penetration. And they were attacking that basket. They were attacking that basket. So I, 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 I love that. I think he's the best player on the floor. Now this kid, Jaron Jackson, you know, shout out to the defensive player of the year. I mean, he really is doing a really nice job. Okay, and I like the matchups that they're utilizing, and and they took Dylan Brooks off of LeBron. Why? Because LeBron James isn't playing on the perimeter during this series. He's playing a as a he's playing as a power forward. Mm-hmm. So, I, I these coaches. That's why I love some of these coaches are so good. Like we don't even, you know, you look. I was like, God, why does he have Xavier Tillman? That, that doesn't even make sense. I was looking, and I started looking at the game, and I was like, Oh, that's why that guy is getting paid the big bucks, and I'm not. I'm just sitting at home because he mm-hmm. got to the matchup that he wanted to get to. Mm-hmm. He got to the matchup. Now th- that is like that's like I was like oh okay now he has Jaron Jackson he's getting to the matchups Desmond Bain that I was like and he wouldn't switch well, so if anyone sets a screen for LeBron James Tillman would just run through the screen so yeah. I was like look at this I was like good for him and it clearly it's effective because LeBron just can't LeBron just can't run through him. So that I thought that was a good matchup. Uh, LeBron, like he he was terrific. He had twenty. I mean, he had twenty some points, but the twenty rebounds that's pretty good. I mean, you're thirty eight years old. You get twenty rebounds in a playoff game. All right. Um, I give him credit and give the Lakers credit. I mean, they they grind. They, they, you know, when you say when you find a way to win and you don't play well, that speaks volume. They didn't play well and they had to grind this game out and they did it. And LeBron James. He he made big plays, especially in overtime. I thought AD made timely plays. Yeah, and you know those guys they they played a game where they had to you know just just stay in it, and they did it. And sometimes you win those games. And tonight that was a good win. That was a good hard fought win for them. But give the Grizzlies credit. I think the I think the Grizzlies have something that they can feel positive about going home. I think they probably feel confident that they can win when they go home. And the Lakers, you know what? If you play with fire or you play with with your food at the table, 
it, it could be a little shaky. So for the Lakers' sake, finish it. Now finish this. Because the last thing you want to do is have to have a game seven in in Memphis. Now it's anybody's game. And more times than not, we've seen the home team win. So I think they have two chances to win one. I understand it's going to be tough to win down there. But at the very least, if they come back to L.A., that's going to be tough too. And and the Grizzlies, I know the, what, the, what the Grizzlies are saying – they they if they could get back to LA they can win the series they're young you can tell you you can tell these guys well, are well, I mean Dylan Brooks guys, and John Morant both refused to speak to the media after the game which was kind yeah. of weird yeah well you know what I, I mean you said you were good in the West you said that you're going to poke the bear don't be quiet now keep the same energy don't be quiet now that you lost two in a row don't be scared don't be scared it's okay do your interviews. Um, but if they come back and win the series, I want everybody. They're not going to. Gonna. They're, they're not going to win the series. They're not, they're not going to win the series. Lakes will win us in five games. Um, but speaking of playing with your food and, and finishing the job, we've got three games coming up tonight uh, in which teams hold three-one leads, and I want to know from you whether the team will win the series tonight or whether the series will get extended. So first of all, we start in Boston, where the Celtics are going to host the Atlanta Hawks. No, Dejounte Murray. Dejounte Murray suspended. So, uh, See, we don't have to go through that. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to stay on character and say Hawks, just because yes. you know the you know you know how that yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yes. Denver versus Minnesota. Denver, and then the Clippers and the Suns. Suns. I feel like the Clippers could steal one here, though. Okay, that's fine. Go I, ahead. Tell us why. I I feel like I'm just trying to will it into the universe more so than okay. anything else because I'm loving this run from Russell will Westbrook. And tell, tell us why. I'm Go loving ahead. this run Go. from Russell Westbrook and, you know, just the way he's been playing over this series so far, proving everyone who criticized him wrong. Also, the last two games, even without Kawhi Leonard, they've been very close. It's not like the Suns blew them out. They've been very close games. Um, this one obviously being on the road in Phoenix makes it a lot harder for the Clippers, but you know, a couple calls here and a couple calls there and a couple made shots here. You never know. You never know. I mean, more than likely the Suns will come in and win by 10, 15 points, but I'm just trying to speak that one into existence. I just want to, I just want to extend the series to see if Kawhi Leonard can just say, okay, cool. I'm back for game six. And then if they somehow win game six, then we've got game seven. Kawhi and Kevin. I just, that's just what I was I'm well, just these, dreaming these, more so than yeah. The, I'm dreaming well, but, more so than actually. Well, why you treat these point? kids like 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 robot? Well, the what guy's been mean? out with like the guy has a serious knee injury. He's going to sit out for three games and then suddenly just come back and reappear because he's Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> I wouldn't say it about any other player. This is what he, it's not like I'm saying I want Paul George to come back. It's Kawhi Leonard. He's different. I'm saying it's Kawhi oh. Leonard. I'm pretty okay. sure Kawhi could sit out an entire season, come back in and still cook. So, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that's what I want to see. Um, what I do want to see more than that, though, is I want to see everyone listening, subscribe to the Hoop Genius Podcast, wherever you get your podcast from. Share the show with your friend because we catch you up on everything you need to know from the playoffs and everything you need to know ahead of tonight. So hopefully tonight, less dramatic and we get a, a nice three-game slate. Uh, but you never know. That's the beauty of the NBA. We're going to be here tomorrow to talk it all through with you guys. So make sure you lock in and most importantly, get buckets.